as you can see, the Nyquist plot gives us the magnitude and phase of the loop transfer function at each point uh, for values of omega as frequency is varied. So it does it gives us information about the frequency response. And we're going to see in class how the Nyquist plot can be interpreted to look for stability. However, generating a Nyquist plot and interpreting it are not always trivial tasks. And so first we want to look at uh, logs and decibels and how that leads us into what's known as the Bode plot. We know that in general we can write the loop transfer function, say L of s, as g of s times c of s. And we know that if uh, in polar form, we could write each of these transfer functions as some magnitude, say r, and these would both be uh, functions of, of s times some, the exponential of some j times say theta of s, theta 1, excuse me, and that uh, c of s we could write as say r2 of s times e of j theta 2 of s, so this should be r1. And then we know that the product of these, so then L of s is just going to be r1 of s times r2 of s times e to the j times theta 1 of s plus theta 2 of s. So what we see then is that for the, the product of two transfer functions, the magnitude of the new transfer function is just going to be the product of the magnitudes of the functions g and c, and that the new phase angle is just going to be the sum of the phases. So we could write that the magnitude of L of s is just going to be the magnitude of R1 times the magnitude of R2. And we know then that the phase angle of L of s is just the phase angle of, uh, sorry, it's just going to be theta 1 plus theta 2, which is just the phase angle of C g plus the phase angle of c. And over here in magnitude, this is just the magnitude of g times the magnitude of c. Well, Adding and, and multiplying things isn't too bad, but if we were to use logs, then for magnitude, in other words, if we took the log of the magnitude of L of S, that would be the log of the magnitude of G times the magnitude of C, which from log rules is just the log of the magnitude of G plus the log of the magnitude of C. So since it's easier to add than it is to multiply in general, then we like using logarithms uh, when it comes to calculating magnitude and phase. Um, or sorry, magnitude. Uh, additionally, we're going to vary the frequency. We'd like to go from 0 to infinity, uh, but that's relatively hard to plot. So typically, we're going to plot the log of omega. Now let's take a look at decibels. And hopefully you've seen this before. And we're going to use dB. Uh, a decibel is defined as, if I take the magnitude of g of, say, j omega, and I'm going to calculate that in dB, that's defined as 20 times the log of the magnitude of g of j omega. Decibels are useful in terms of a definition in terms of logarithms because we know that when the magnitude of g of j omega is equal to uh, 1, then the log of g of j omega is then just equal to 0. So unity gain right, for g of j omega, when we talk about it in decibels, is just 20 times 0, so we get 0 dB. Finally, taking the magnitude of, the, uh, of a transfer function like this is useful, because if we want to know the magnitude, say, of the loop transfer function here, and in dB, that's going to be 20 times the log of the magnitude of uh, L 
of j omega, which is going to be 20 times the log of the magnitude of g of j omega times the magnitude of c of j omega, which is just 20 log magnitude of g of j omega plus 20 log magnitude of c of j omega, which is just equal to the magnitude of g j omega in db plus the magnitude of c j omega in db. Using decibels is useful when we want to go ahead and plot these uh, the magnitude and phase of these transfer functions, and particularly the magnitude. Let's say we had the log of the frequency that we're varying versus the magnitude of the function in dB. And let's say that g of j omega started at 0 dB and then went along and it had a little cusp here and then rolled off. So this curve here represents g of j omega. And let's say that we added a controller that did something like the following, rolled off and then had a peak and then rolled off. And so this is, say, c of j omega. And let's say that's at minus 5. Then to plot the magnitude in dB versus the log of the frequency of the product of the two, which would just be um, L of j omega in dB, then we know we would just add these two curves together. And so we would just say, okay, well, that's just going to do something like this. And this is going to start at, say, minus 5. And the way I drew this, the idea is that these kind of cancel each other out. So, so these would have to come kind of down to the same point. So the idea is that we can go ahead and if I have the product of two, right, L of j omega is just g of j omega times c of j omega, which comes from the block diagram c of j omega and then g of j omega. So this is the, the forward path of our closed loop control system. Whenever I have a product of two transfer functions, which I do over here, when I go ahead and plot that magnitude in logarithms or in decibels, I just have to add the two things together. Finally, we notice in general that I can always write some transfer function, say g of s, as a gain times the product of the zeros of the system, say I have m zeros, over the product of all the pure integrators times the product of the poles of the system. So we call this root form. So if I want to know the magnitude of g of j omega, and I do this in dB, then I just have Every time I have a product, that's an addition. Every time I have, I'm dividing by a, a root, I just have uh, a subtraction. So I'd have the magnitude of k in dB, and then plus the magnitude of j omega minus z1 in dB, plus dot dot dot, plus the magnitude of j omega minus zm in dB. And then I would subtract n times the magnitude of j omega in db, right? because again, I use a log rule that if I have log of s to the n, it's just n times the log of s. And then subtract off the magnitude of j omega minus p1 in db minus dot 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 minus the magnitude of j omega minus pn in db. So to understand how to construct a Bode plot, or at least the magnitude versus the frequency uh, plot, then all we have to do is know how to calculate or, or determine what each of these uh, plots would look like individually and then add them up. So in other words, if we look at, okay, well, what's the magnitude of a constant plotted in dB look like? What's the magnitude of j omega minus z1 in dB look like? What's uh, minus n times j omega magnitude in dB look like? What's this? So we really only have four different kinds of systems that we need to understand. And then we can also look at, uh, if I had second order systems, we could look at that.
So again, this is a way to deconstruct the magnitude of a transfer function in dB is a way to deconstruct it into its components and then add them together as opposed to having to multiply them out. Finally, the last thing we're going to mention is that the Bode plot contains the same information as the Nyquist plot, only it breaks it up into two distinct axes as opposed to being on one axis. And in general, this is a bit easier to interpret. And we're going to look at things like gain and phase crossover frequency. And these are relatively easy to see on the Bode plot as opposed to the Nyquist. In MATLAB, and we'll go ahead and sh I'll show you an example in MATLAB. In MATLAB, the Bode plot uh, by default plots the magnitude of the transfer function that you pass in in dB versus the log of the frequency. And it plots the, uh, the phase angle of L of j omega in degrees versus the log of the angle. And so for a, a typical first order system, that might look something like this. And then we'd have some phase change here. And let's go ahead and take a look at that in MATLAB. Finally, let's take a look at how we would generate a Bode plot using MATLAB. Again, we can define a transfer function object, say L. Let's use the motor model as our transfer function. And we simply type Bode of L. And here's the Bode plot. Now, this is what we call the open loop Bode. And notice here, this transfer function has some, uh, notice it's plotting the magnitude in dB versus the, the um, log of the frequency. This is a log scale. And it, the, by default, the frequency is in radians per second. And then the phase angle is in, is in degrees. And we see, OK, yeah, this does what it does. Uh, another interesting example would be looking at the uh, mass on a spring with some damping. And if we type Bode of that system, we see, OK, at um, very low frequency, notice it doesn't go to 0, because you can't take a log of 0. But if it doesn't go to 0 the, um, in terms of frequency, uh, the, d, the magnitude in dB goes to 0, which means it has unity gain, which is true. When s is 0 over here, I get 4 over 4, I get 1. And then the phase goes from 0 to minus 180. And it's not clear in here, but there's this little bump in here, which is a resonance, which we've seen. And at high frequency, I get very low, uh, very low um, magnitude, which we see again if I increase s or let s equal j omega and then increase omega, then I get 4 over a larger and larger number, and this magnitude decrease, decreases. So notice that if I leave that figure there, generate a new figure, and then use the Nyquist command, on that. So notice when I hold these two together, I can now compare and verify that they indeed do contain the same information. When frequency is low, meaning near zero, which means I'm approaching this point over here, and there's when it's exactly zero, notice that I have a magnitude of 1, which would correspond to 0 dB. As frequency gets large, and this is large negative, if I want to look at large positive values of frequency, I can look on this side of the curve. We see that as the frequency gets larger and larger and larger, the magnitude tends in to zero, which is uh, happening as this curve, which means that I have uh, more and more negative dB. And we also see that the phase angle, right, it starts out at zero because the phase from of this point is zero measured with respect to the real axis. And as frequency increases, then I get more and more negative uh, phase. And out here, I've got uh, 90 degrees of, minus 90 degrees of phase at 2 radians per second, which corresponds to this value right here. There's 1 and then 2. And then as frequency gets bigger and bigger and bigger, notice kind of in the limit, then this phase is approaching minus 180 degrees, which happens down here. So the Nyquist and the Bode give you identical information, but it's generally considered nowadays that the Bode plot is more easily read and has more useful, uh, inf has, is, contains information which is in a more useful form.